I had to change my headband. This is what I got now. The other one's doing some structural support, right? I want to talk about something that's been very disturbing for me, and that's the Ruiz Factor. Do you know about the Ruiz Factor? I met one when I was in Chicago. I met him on the south side. You know, he seemed really big. He was huge, actually. The guy was absolutely, he was enormous. And I, I met him, and when I was talking to the guy, he had this map on his desk. And something about whatever else was going on. I went there to talk to the guy. I was trying to get a permit. Yeah, I had to go talk to him in order to get some information about whether or not uh, he had some recommendations about places to get this permit for this thing. But while I was there, he had this map right on the end of his desk behind him. And I'm like, wow, can I see that? And he's like, no. I picked the map up. Put it in another part of the desk. Okay, all right. Told me I had to go talk to some other guy, right? And this guy was big. He was a huge guy. I mean, I remember seeing him. I was like, wow, you're huge. You're a huge guy. Seemed friendly enough. But then something happened. I'm in another country. People are telling me about their history, telling me about things going on. They told me about there's this guy, this guy they knew that was part of their culture way back in the day. He was a, a leader, an indigenous leader. They had some stories about him. It was one of these things, you know, they would tell me a particular story, and they knew a particular story. Oh, I wasn't going to mess with that. You don't mess with people's understanding of uh, their culture like that. I know better. But something happened at some point in time. It was in a different part of the country. Years and years after the first event. And all of a sudden, this Ruiz enters my life. She's big. Not as big as the first guy I met, but there's something about her presence. It's unsettling. And she's not suited to me. It seems to be this kind of weird archetype thing, right? She's very dark-skinned. I'm very light-skinned. She has a certain kind of energy about her. I have an energy that's not quite the same. There seem to be different expectations about what she had access to and was doing versus what I had access to and was doing. She was treated in a different manner than I was. She had different circulation within the community than I do, if you know what I mean. There was a story online. I found it. You know, it started with Wikipedia. you got to start somewhere. And you try to cross-reference the source to see if it holds up. And the story was that this guy, this indigenous guy, this chief guy, was back in the day, somebody was after him. This Mexican bounty hunter type of guy, basically. He was a bounty hunter. And he heard that he could get this guy. And there was some report about how this man ended up dying. And they said he was in a battle. And in the course of the battle... He had gone and he had communicated with other chiefs in order to get them to arrange for a particular kind of battle. And what happened was that they got surrounded. And when he raised the white flag to go out and talk to them, they let him approach. And as soon as he got near, they killed him. And this is one of these things you got to deal with. Great chief understands he's going to have to deal with that confrontation. And in the course thereof, he's betrayed. At least that's the story they tell. But this story was different. The understanding was that there was a bounty on this guy. And he wanted to be the one who was credited with taking him down. And he wanted to get paid. That was the guy. The huge guy. That was Ruiz. I didn't know. I had no idea. I didn't know this whole thing. You know, you see the westerns, you hear stuff about this. Maybe you think, maybe I can do that, you know. It's a bounty hunter. You got some criminales, you got some bad guys out there. You put one of those, wanted. Put a price on their head, give you a picture. You ever seen any of those guys? America's 10 most wanted. You know, one of those things, when I considered what would be the determination of how you would create or post a wanted notice like that, and you might get the right shot, the right mug shot, shows their face, puts them in a context. Yeah, that's what a hardened criminal looks like. And he's wanted by the people. And we'll reward you for your hard work. What's the price point? Hmm? How much did Ruiz get for taking out that chief? 
You know, you think this is something that just happened a couple hundred years ago. Actually, it happened relatively recently, didn't it? It happens all the time, right? Yeah. So it's one of those things. You kind of meet this guy, and you're not, maybe you meet this woman. There's just something about him. You're like, wow, you know. First time you meet him, maybe you recognize him. Second time you meet him, maybe you recognize her, right? And the question is, what price point did you expect to get? When's it enough? Right? Now, I think that I'm supposed to have a different understanding of this. An understanding I have was from some stuff I knew about before I went down there and someone told me the story and kind of uh, understanding some of the things people told me when they told me their story. And then some other stuff I found out later, some other stuff I lived through too, right? But, you know, in the last uh, 30 years that I would have been considered uh, to be responsible for something in that kind of uh, way of being, there have been a lot of guys that have bounties on them. You know that? Some ladies too. Yeah, for a pretty penny for some people. Criminals, terrorists, enemies of the state. You know, I made a 10 most wanted list myself once. I didn't think about price point. I did not think about what I would actually value a actual, demonstrable, useful kind of information in order to get them! Put them away! And see them executed like the criminal they are. Reward for information leading to the arrest and prosecution of this criminal. I did not list things. I am very sorry. I never let you know what you were going to get if you cooperated. And that's my fault. I have to take responsibility for that. Right? And I did it ten times. Ten most wanted. And now we're at this situation where all the evidence is in. All the charges have been proven, including some charges we didn't even know about at the time. They've got their face on that mugshot, right? But I never listed the price point. See, I'm one of those people. I think land is really important. How do you value land? If you listen to some of the other old timers, right? I got a different understanding of what land's worth. Would I have given land for the capture of those criminals? Yes, I would have. 